Okay, in this section, I'm going to talk about and try to understand the addition rule. The addition rule answers this question. It gives a formula for the probability of event A or B happening. You have event A, you have event B. There's no reason to assume that A and B can't have anything in common. Now, if you just said, well, I'm going to compute the probability of being an A. That is, I'm taking into account the chances that I'm in A. For argument's sake, 40% of the time, I can be an A. But I can, I want the probability of being an A or B. So I'm going to add on the probability of being in B. Maybe the chances of being in B is 30%. Now I am in B. But if you think about it, what's in the middle here, I count it twice. I counted it as being part of probability of A, and then I counted it a second time in the probability of B. So if you count something twice, and you only want to count it one time, you better take it away. You better take away the probability of being in the intersection. So maybe I'll take away the horizontal ones. So what remains is just the vertical lines. That is. I counted that area one time. Remember, A or B is what's highlighted. There's no reason we should count the middle twice. That's why, that's why I took it away. That's why I took it away. Let's look at some examples. What's the probability that you roll an even number or a six. Now, there's two ways of doing this. You can use the formula above or you can understand exactly what that is. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are evens and that's a six. There's only three favorable outcomes out of the six. Okay, that's without using the formula. The formula is a bit tricky. Call this A or rolling a six, B. So this is, reading the formula above, probability of A or B is the probability of A you roll an even number plus the probability of B, the probability that you roll a six minus the probability that you roll an even number and a six. Okay. The probability that you roll an even number, well, there's six numbers, Three of them are even. Two, four, six. Plus, probability roll a six. Well, there's six numbers. Exactly one of them is a six. Minus the probability that you roll an even number and a six. Well, out of the six choices, how many of these six choices are an even number and a six? Well, this here is the only number the only outcome that's both even and six. So you take away one six. So everything's over six. You have three plus one minus one. Because I add the numerators or subtract. Three plus one minus one. Three plus one is four. Minus one is three. Oh, we get three over six, which is a half. Exactly what we got before took a lot more work using the formula, but it works.
hate to do this, but let's talk about deck of cards. I hate to do this because some students just don't know the makeup of a deck of cards. Well, for a whole dollar, dollar fifty, you can buy a deck of cards. And you can go online and look at a deck of cards for free. But you need to know a deck of cards. A deck of cards, some of the cards are spades, some are diamonds, some are clubs, but this isn't working out so well for me. Too much space. Some cards are spades. Some cards are diamonds. Some cards are clubs. And some cards are spades. Spades. Now for each of, oh, I have spades twice, don't I? Spades, diamond, clubs. Why can I not think of the fourth one? I will in a moment. I can't think of the fourth suit. Everyone's screaming in now, but don't worry about it just yet. For spades, you have an ace, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight, a nine, a ten of spades, a seven of spades. They're all called a spades. You can have the jack of spades, the queen of spades, and the king of spades. For diamonds, you can have the ace of diamonds, the two of diamonds, the three of diamonds. The same 13 different cards for diamonds. Diamonds. Can't believe I don't know this. Well, I know it. I can't believe I can't think of it. But for clubs, you have the same 13. This is 10 that I listed, 11, 12, and 13. And for their mystery suit, these up here are called the suits. For their mystery suit that I can think of, it too has an ace and a two and a three and a four and a five. And since each column has 13 different cards and there are four columns, there's a total of 52 cards. If I ask you, what's the probability that you get a jack of clubs? Well, out of the 52 cards, how many are jack of clubs? And the answer is one. There's only one jack of clubs. What's the probability that you get a diamond? Well, out of 52 cards, there are exactly 13 diamonds. Which is one out of four. There's 13 diamonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are 13 diamonds. Now, what's the probability you get a diamond? Well, let me change it. What's the probability that you get a seven? Just get a seven. What's the probability that if you pick one card from the deck, that'll be a seven? Well, there are 52 cards, and exactly four of them are seven. And if you reduce it, it's one over 13. Divide each of these numbers by four, you get one over 13. What's the probability that you get a seven or a nine? Now, these are the eight cards, the sevens and the nines. Those are the eight cards that are a seven or a nine. It's eight out of 52, which is two out of 13. Now, if you use the formula, 
the probability of 7 or 9. It's the probability of the first one plus the probability of the second outcome minus the probability of both of them. Well, the probability of getting a 7, well, it's 52 cards. Four of them are 7s. The 7 of diamonds, the 7 of spades, the 7 of clubs, and of course, the 7 of hearts. Those are the four suits on top. Spades, diamonds, clubs, and hearts. There's four 7s. There's also four 9s out of 52. Minus the probability of getting a 7 and a 9. Well, there's absolutely no cards that are a 7 and a 9. Either you're a 7, or you're a 3, or a 9, or you're a king. You're not a king and a queen. You're not a 7 and a 15. Well, you're not a 7 and an ace. The first one is called ace. Okay, there's a 0 chance of getting a 7 and a 9. Well, since they're all out of 52, we combine the numerators. 4 plus 4 is 8, minus 0 is still 8. And you still get, after you reduce, 2 over 13. Again, using this addition formula was awkward. Now, I'm not saying never, ever use the addition formula. It's too hard or it makes the problems too hard. Sometimes you really have to use it. Now let's try another problem. For some of you, it might be best to use the formula, the addition formula. First thing I want to do is get rid of the circle. In fact, maybe we just remove the whole thing and put it back. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, there are your fifty two cards once again. Eight and nine. Okay. What is the probability? that you get are 10 or a jack. No, no, 10 or a, can I save that, or a heart. Well, there are 13 hearts and there are four tens. But let's be fair. Let us not count the 10 of hearts twice. So there's 13 hearts and an additional 3 tens, 16. The answer before reducing is 16 over 52. 4 goes into the top number 4 times, 4 goes into the bottom number 13 times. The answer is six, 4 over 13, 16 over 23. You had to realize not to count that ten of spades as both, excuse me, ten of hearts, not both as a heart and a ten. Of course, I could have said there are four tens and twelve additional hearts for a total of sixteen. But don't count. Some students may say, oh, this is so easy. There's thirteen hearts, there's four tens, seventeen over fifty-two. No, because you counted the ten of hearts twice. This would not have been good. If you want to use the rule, the addition rule, you can do so. It's the probability of 10 plus the probability of getting a heart minus the probability of getting a 10 and a heart, which means a 10 of hearts. And ah, this didn't come out for some reason. The top line is equal to the probability of getting a 10 plus the probability of getting a heart because this hair is my A and this hair is my B. So it's the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Another, okay, before I wrote the, let's see what I wrote. 
Hmm. Okay. I wrote the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus, I'm 99% sure, I wrote the probability of A intersect B. That means and. Probability of A and B. Oh, I didn't stick B in there. A or B. Okay. So let's do it using the formula, the addition rule. The probability of 10, well, out of the 52 cards, there's four tens. Plus the probability of getting a heart. Well, it's 52 cards and 13 are hearts. Minus the probability of getting a 10 and a heart, which is called the 10 of hearts. Well, out of the 52 cards, there's only one 10 of hearts. So we're out of 52. 4 plus 13 is 17. Minus 1 is 16, which is 4 over 13. It's the exact same answer. Using the addition rule, although you should know it, it makes life harder. Now, let's talk about a modification to the addition rule. Sometimes two things can happen at the same time. Like you can't get a can't draw one card and get a 10 and a 7. Okay. If the probability of A and B, if the probability of A and B can't happen, then the probability of A and B must be identically zero. If it can't happen, well then what are the chances that it happens? Zero. So now you have the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. But that's zero. So you get the probability of A plus the probability of B minus zero, which of course is probability of A plus probability of B. These are just numbers. So you add two numbers and then you take away zero. You got the same as if you just added those numbers. So now we have another formula. We have this formula. But the premise is, is that this is zero. That is, A and B can happen. Oh, I should say A and B can't happen. That is, they can't happen at the same time. Okay? You can't study and go to the movies. Let's assume that's true. Okay? Somebody ask you, what's the probability that you go to the movies, you go to the movies, or you study? And they tell you the probability that you go to the movies is 0.3, 3 over 10. And the probability that you study is 0.4. Somebody asks you, you know, what's the probability tonight that you go to the movies? And you say 0.3. And they say to you, what's the probability that you study? And you say 0.4. And now they're able to answer this question. What's the probability that you go to the movies or study? Well, this and that won't happen. You can't go to the movies and study. You can't do both. Let's assume that's true, okay? Let's just let that be the premise. You can't do both. The probability that you go to the movies or study is just going to be, so this is A and this is B. It's going to be P of A, go to movies, plus the probability of B that you study. And I have both of these numbers. 
The probability you go to the movies is 0.3. The probability you study is 0.4. There's a 0.7 or 70% chance that tonight you'll go to the movies or study. You may say, but where's the rest? Where's the remaining 30%? Oh, you could uh, watch TV. You can go out and play basketball. You can do this. You can do that. You can surf the internet. Okay, but you're going to do one thing tonight. And somebody asks you, <laughs> what is the chances that you go to the movies or study? One or the other. There might be 50 different outcomes. But I just want to know the chances of doing one or, you know, one or two of the outcomes. So sometimes you don't even have to worry about that A and B stuff. It may actually be zero on its own. How cool. Makes life easy. And you don't have to worry about something. Isn't that easier? Just ignore it. It's zero. But for the record, even if you didn't ignore it, you would have taken, remember, you're supposed to take away the probability of A and B. That would have been zero. That would have been zero. You told everyone that you're going to do just one thing tonight. And since you're a popular person, everyone wants you to do that thing. One friend wants you to go to the movie. The other friend wants you to study with her. The other friend wants you to go ice skating. Another friend wants you to do something else. All right. Now we're going to do problems as, as such. Uh, suppose there's an accident. A driver unfortunately hits a pedestrian. You have the driver, you have the pedestrian. And the question is, is the driver drunk or is the pedestrian drunk? Or maybe none of them. And they, you know, either the driver is drunk or the driver is not drunk or the pedestrian is drunk or is not drunk. And what I should say is this is a study of pedestrian automobile accidents. And 59 times that occurred, and I'll talk about what that is in a moment. And 79 fell into that category, and 266 fell into that category, and 581 fell into that category. Well, what does this 581 mean? It means 500 and of their cases studied, 581 times the driver was not drunk, no, and the pedestrian was not drunk. In this study, 79 times the pedestrian was not drunk, but the driver was. 266 times the driver was drunk, the pedestrian was not. Since I drew on this a lot, let me write it down. The driver is drunk or is not drunk? Yes or no? We have the pedestrian drunk. Yes or no? And rarely the table is here. And you have 59, you have 79, you have 266 and 581. If I was asked questions about a table like this, the first thing I would do would be make up the totals. 266 plus 59 is, I guess, 325. 79 plus 81 is 660. 
59 and 79 is 138. And 266 and 581 is 7, 847. And when we add up these numbers, they should be the same as those numbers. When I add up the bottoms, I get 985. And when I add up the tops, I do not, which is not good. The 849 is obviously wrong. 7, 847. And now when I add these up, I get 970, 985. So there it is. So what I'm about to circle in red, that's what we added. We added this. Added means inserted. Now we can ask questions about this. If one of the pedestrian's death is randomly selected, find the probability that the pedestrian was intoxicated or the driver was. What's the probability that the pedestrian or driver was drunk, intoxicated? Okay, so I don't want to draw on this again. You have driver, you have pedestrian. Yes, no. Yes, no. Well, if the driver it was drunk, it would be those numbers because they went by the yes. If the pedestrian was drunk, it would be this number and that number. Okay, out of the 985 group study, they studied 985 pedestrian drive car auto accidents, pedestrian automobile accidents. They did a study in 985 and they want to know how many times was either the pedestrian or the driver was drunk. Now, or allows is both. In mathematics, or means and or. You're allowed to end. That is, both the pedestrian and the driver can be drunk. Well, it's 59 and 79 and 266. And I happen to know those two numbers add up to 325, these two numbers. And when I add 79, I get, it looks like 404. So the answer is 404 out of nine, the 985 accidents. 404 times out of 985 accidents, either the pedestrian and or the driver was drunk. Now, another way of doing that same problem is you have 985 and the 581 is the only case that we don't count. So you could have taken away 581 and gotten 404, just like we did a moment ago. Rather than adding up many numbers, you can just take away one number from the total, or maybe just take away two numbers from the total. So, what if I say, the probability that the pedestrian is not drunk or the driver was not drunk. Now, or is good. That means we don't have to worry about things. You have the pedestrian and the driver. Yes. No. Yes, no. The pedestrian not drunk would be those. Or the driver not drunk. Not drunk for the driver. It would be these numbers. So those are the numbers we have to add up. Or from the total, from the 985, 
Now, instead of adding up 266 and 581, which we already know because it's right here, it's 847, and then adding the 79, we can just take away the 59. It's all but these 59, which if I did my arithmetic right, is 926, 970, 985. So the answer would be 926 out of 985, either the pedestrian or the driver was not drunk, which is pretty, well, if it said and, that would be pretty good, but at least one of them was not drunk. We just don't include the 59. That's when they're both drunk. Okay, let's try to answer another question from this chart. What's the probability that nobody was drunk? What's the probability that nobody was drunk? Well, first, I want to say that in a different language. What would go in the brackets? I mean, you can literally write nobody was drunk. What you can say is the pedestrian was not drunk and the driver was not drunk. Well, they're both not drunk. You have the pedestrian and the driver. Yes, no. Drunk or not drunk? Well, and. Well, the pedestrian not drunk would fall in there. The driver not drunk would fall in here. But since it says and, we want both of them to be true. For example, this number here, whatever it is, it wouldn't mean that the pedestrian was drunk, but the driver was not. This area here would mean the pedestrian was not drunk, but the driver was. Why do I get the impression I said this one wrong? This number here would say the pedestrian was drunk, the driver was not. But we don't want anyone to be drunk. Not in, we're not talking about in real life, we're talking about in this problem. You want the pedestrian not to be drunk and the driver not to be drunk. That's only right here. Only here can you say pedestrian was not drunk and the driver was not drunk. The number that happens to be here is 581. So the answer will be 581 times out of 985 times nobody was drunk. I should have said 581 times out of 985 accidents, pedestrian automobile accidents, 581 times nobody was drunk. Which is not good because there's an awful lot of times where people were drunk. Just do this, subtract the two numbers. If you did 985 minus 581, you get 404. That's the ch probability. Those are the number of times somebody was drunk. That is the probability that the driver is drunk or the pedestrian was drunk. This we've already done. It's 404 times out of the total of 985. If these numbers are true, that's pretty sad. But then again, that doesn't mean there's a lot of drunk drivers. It's just saying that when somebody is struck, when a pedestrian is struck, there's a good chance somebody was drunk. Okay, I mean, it might be a one in a gazillion chance that a pedestrian gets hit by an automobile. It might be very, 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 very unlikely. But when it does happen, high chance one or the other were drunk. So I take back being troubled by these numbers. These numbers don't really say much. It may have taken a million years for 985 accidents to occur. So that's a table that we should know how to read. And that finishes this section on the addition rule.